So we're going to start with an icebreaker question. Uh, this is going to be a one-word answer from all of you real fast. We really want to know where you honestly stand on things. And we're going to start with this, this question here. Mets or Yankees? We're so many Yankees. Aaron? My name's Aaron Foldenauer, candidate for New York City Council District 1, Yankees. Hi, my name is Christopher Marte. I'm running for City Council District 1, and I say Yankees. Good evening, my name is Jasmine Sanchez. I'm running for New York City Council District 2 at New York Mets. Let's go Mets! Hello, I'm Mary Silver. I'm running for City Council District 2, and I say Yankees. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Carlina Rivera, I'm a candidate for New York City Council, District 2, and I love the Mets so much that Mr. Met showed up to my wedding. Hi, I'm Erin Hussein, also a candidate for New York City Council, District 2, Mets. Right. Thank you everyone. Uh, the correct answer is actually Brooklyn Cyclones, we are independent theater. Okay, so. All right, now that we're all nice and loose. Our first question will focus on real estate, in particular space to rehearse and perform. It is the number one concern for our members. We space before funding is our motto. As one of the league's founding members and, and OB winner John Clancy would say, when we have space, we make work happen. Real estate is the highest budget item for productions. Despite the rising cost for space rental, Around 100 indie theater venues in New York City have closed since the year 2000. Candidates, please address no. one of the first three planks of our performing arts platform. They cover access to potential rehearsal and performance space, exchange programs to get space is our motto. As one of the leads... <laughs> so nice, we hear it twice. <laughs> um, so, the creation and preservation of, of current spaces. So. What would you do if elected to take tangible, positive steps to achieve these proposals? Each of you have two minutes to answer this question. We're gonna start again, stage right, and move to stage left. Again, my name is Aaron Foldenauer, and I actually have a substantial background in the performing arts, which I hope to tell you about later. But to the, <laughs> to the point of the question, um, New York City is actually dotted with empty storefronts. And in my district, Lower Manhattan, and on a stretch of Broadway in Soho, out of 100 storefronts, 20 of them are empty. And landlords apparently have incentives to leave the space empty to hold out for what they think is the perfect chain store, which is actually a big problem because New York City risks becoming a generic suburb like Mall of America. And if that happens, then no one will want to come here. No one want to, will want to visit our unique cultural institutions. So what I would do is provide incentives for landlords to open their empty spaces, open the empty floors on office towers, and use those spaces for rehearsal spaces and performance spaces, and, and thus it's a win-win for everyone. The landlord wins, and all of you have spaces to rehearse and spaces to perform. Thank you very much. You can just stay behind the table if you want. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 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 now, the president has been set. Exactly. Um, hello, everyone, again. My name is Christopher Marte. I grew up in the Lower East Side, not too far away from here. And I know the importance of art, theater, and affordable space. My dad, a bodega owner, by day and night, playwright. He used to go do playwrights and the Alto Royati, which is literally across the street. So I know the importance of having an affordable space to express yourself, tell your story, show your vision. And so that's why I'm proposing not only to use vacant storefront with tax incentives to allow affordable plays and rehearsals to take place, but also look at the theaters that are vacant. Canal Street Theater is vacant. It's a beautiful theater that hasn't had a show in over 20 years. Can you imagine that in a city filled with artists looking and trying to find a place to perform? And we have a beautiful theater that can sit almost 300 people, not even being used. And so it's having the vision, the knowledge of what the neighborhood has, you know, interacting with people, saying, what space can you give us? And then creating a database online so everyone in this room 
knows that that place is available and that place is affordable. So in my experience with technology, community, engagement, I will talk to people, research, and put it online for everyone to see. You know, create a Craigslist. You know, maybe we use a, a city space, but maybe we enhance it that has live data of when you can use it, how you can use it, and for what purposes. So that's what, I was, that's what I'll do as your city council person. Someone that knows the district, that knows technology, and that has done it before. I repurposed my brother's gym facility for artists. We actually had artists in residence for three months when they did Danny in the uh, <laughs> Deep Blue Sea. And it was amazing. You know, Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday nights, that's all they needed. They needed one hour to prep and one hour to clean up. And they were able to express themselves, perform, and had a great, great uh, um, event. And so that's what I'll do as a city council person. And you can trust me, because I've done it before, I know how to do it, and I can do it the right way. Thank you. Maybe I'll just stand behind the table. <laughs> a new precedent has been set. Do it. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. My name is Jasmine Sanchez, and I am running for city council for the second district. Um, this is something that is home to me because my sister recently graduated from NYU Tisch as a theater major. So I do understand the struggles that all of you are facing. Um, she's been interning uh, since graduation and she's been working on productions and she's had to secure spaces and it's been really, really hard for her to do so. Um, what I have been able to do thus far is as a founder of my own nonprofit organization, I have been able to work with Department of Education and private schools as well as NYCHA facilities and uh, DYCD to ensure that we do have access to these spaces in exchange for any of the workshops that I have, which are service learning, athleticism programs, um, workshops for mentoring for young girls and young boys, so we were able to secure space after hours, especially at Beacon programs and these nitro facilities that stay open until 10 p.m. because we were offering a service to the community. And this is what I will do for you. I will ensure that I am advocating on your behalf to make sure that you can get into these schools that close at 3 p.m. and utilize these spaces. In my district in particular, in Baruch houses, there's a bathhouse that has been abandoned since the 70s. I don't understand why it hasn't been renovated yet, but I think this would be an ideal place to start a cultural hub um, with all types of performing organizations here. <laughs> okay. all, all sorts of, of organizations. Um, lastly, I think that there's another organization, there's another building, um, Charas, which is on Avenue B, and I think that that needs to be reopened, and I feel that with me as an advocate, because I do understand the plight that everyone has to go through, because I am seeing it firsthand with my sister, this will be accomplished, and I will not let you down. I think this sounds better, yes. Yeah. I'm Mary Silver, I'm running for City Council, Council District 2. Uh, I have spent 20 years uh, advocating for our schools. I went from class mom to PTA president to the school board, to the community board, to the advisory board for uh, the 30th Street Men's Home Shelter. And along the way, I focused on performing arts because despite what our controller says, while there are arts teachers, there are no performing arts teachers, or very rarely are there performing arts teachers in our schools. However, many of our schools do have, as Jasmine mentioned, uh, lots of performance space. Uh, I just spent the last several years uh, raising about a million dollars for our public schools to create performance space in uh, elementary school and in a uh, high school as well, Baruch College Campus High School. Uh, it's all about community relationships. I think that one of the biggest problems for the indie theater is a PR problem, if I may say that. I think that uh, New York City doesn't appreciate the kind of work that you do uh, and that we need to work together to make sure that you are on the forefront of performance as you have been for many, many years. So in my mind, it really is pragmatic to look at schools. Those opportunities are there, and the students would benefit from you coming in and teaching them, 
I know there's a model in Queens that works right now. Uh, we need to make sure through awareness that we expand those ideas. I also think in terms of senior centers, this would be a perfect match uh, for uh, performance space and for seniors to develop workshops, not only in the schools, but for seniors, many of them who have performing arts backgrounds themselves. So this would really be a very good fit. And um, I wanna, <laughs> I wanna be your city council member and as somebody who has a background in the arts, I used to roam these streets uh, working for artists and performers and I know where the, the hidden gems are and there are plenty of them, so thank you. <laughs> Hello everyone. So this is a great question. It all leads to affordability. I am someone who has spent my entire life in this district. I'm a lifelong New Yorker, but specifically, I have spent my entire life walking up and down these streets. So I know what the issues are from corner to corner. So when we talk about affordability, you're absolutely right, we're talking about space. And we're talking about space in every sense of the word. Housing, small businesses, services, even where our transportation is, right? Every single square inch of space is speculated on in New York City. And I think it's about time that our working class families and specifically artists got their fair share. So I, uh, my background is working in activism. And before I worked inside of the city council, and I'll tell you a little bit about kind of the budget process and how important that is to maintaining this kind of survival of our independent theaters, I worked at Good Old Lower East Side, and I worked organizing tenants, a lot of them artists who have been here a long time, and a lot of them that are new to the neighborhood. And my campaign will be inclusive, it will include everyone. But what I always said is that we have to really link arts and activism. It is the one thing that truly brings us all together. It is intergenerational, and it is something that you can put youth and, and senior citizens in the room, and you can still have a constructive conversation. So what I want to do, yes, I want to utilize the, the underutilized space. I want to go in, into NYCHA, into some of this, these commercial storefronts that aren't being used. And I want to make sure that by using the city council funds, that we are giving it back to our institutions. I remember my experience of uh, going to see a show at, well, it wasn't PS 122, but we will <laughs> open those doors soon. It was in the Connolly Theater, and I saw this wonderful show called Mission Drift in the style of Jacques Brel. Who can say that they can see that on East 4th Street? Nowhere else but East Village and District 2. So I will fight for this funding. I will make sure that I fund the community-based organizations that are doing the work. And I really, really am proud to be running in my hometown. Uh, hi, again, I'm Erin Hussein. Um, I am a former lawyer, and when I went to law school, um, I wrote and directed the law school follies at my law school because um, I, I'm just, I, I'm one of those people I believe like Shakespeare that, that performing art and life are just two sides of the same coin. Um, that's why I'm, I'm particularly taken by um, the second plank of the platform. Um, our district spent uh, $220,000 in discretionary funds on after school programs for public school students and about that same much for senior centers. Um, this is money that obviously, you know, we don't need to spend that much money if we are creating a way to benefit the communities, all of the communities. So if we can help out independent theater by allowing them to use public school space or using senior center space, and then at the same time, they're running a workshop for seniors who, I think Mary said, a lot of them have performing arts backgrounds themselves, or uh, children who, um, whose imagination can be sparked by working in the performing arts, um, then I think it's a win-win for everyone. Um, it looks more like a barter system and less like, a, like an expenditure system. Um, in my building, um, I, I'm the president of one of the largest co-ops in the district, and we have residents that are 94 years old all the way down to residents that are two months old. And the joy that you see from the interaction of the different ages working together is just something that I think theater could definitely bring to all of these uh, different demographics and populations. I also want to echo what Jasmine said. 605 East Knight Street is the former Charis building. It's the building where Spike Lee presented his first 
student film in the auditorium. It was a building that was built to be a school and to be a, and a, and to be a community auditorium facility. It has been sitting vacant for 20 years. It has to be given back to the community. It would be a theater, it would be a performance space, a rehearsal space, it's 150,000 wasted square feet. All right, round one is over. Doing well. Uh, while we're transitioning here, some shout outs. Erez Ziv with Horse Trade Theater. Thank you so much. He's the one who came down that bad to fix the microphone. Somebody has to take care of everything. Uh, Robert Gagno, go see a sh show podcast over here. Taking care of our sound. So awesome. The Ura Caparati and Kairos Italy Theater. She's also the head of our uh, foreign language working group. She should be here. Kevin, Kevin Cunningham from 3LD, are you here, sir? Well, give him a round of applause anyway. <laughs> Uh, Brad Burgess with the Living Theater. I saw Brad back there. Brad also doing some great things with the cultural plan. Getting some stuff up for that. Amy Todorov and Kristen Cantwell from Elephant Run District are here. <laughs> Amy's also arranging all the candidates you have been arranging. Katie Palmer and Amber Ghosh from Theater and Asylum. <laughs> Randy Berry with Indie Space, creating permanent real estate solutions for the independent theater community. <laughs> Also part of Indie Theater Fund with Erez and Brad and all kinds of folks, which is financially assisting indie theater uh, companies and artists. All right, so now we're gonna move on to our lightning round of questions, candidates. Very simply, raise your hands if you are willing to be a co-sponsor to Ben Kalis' City Spaces Initiative to create a searchable database of unused or underutilized city-owned spaces. Great. Raise your hands if you will clearly and visibly list your stances on issues facing indie theater and the performing arts on your campaign's website and literature. Okay. You support campaign finance reform and getting money from PACs, super PACs, or special interests out of political campaigns at all levels. <laughs> You commit to covering the gap created if there are cuts on a federal level to the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Endowment for the Humanities. You support a path to citizenship for artists who come to this country to perform or work on indie theater productions. Uh, you support the efforts by the New Yorkers for Culture and Arts in getting parity in the NYC Cultural Plan between our Cultural Institutions Group and Cultural Development Fund. All right. You support the expansion of the Cultural Institutions Group to include independent theater anchor venues. You support the promotion of indie theater to the more than 61 million visitors coming to New York City each year. You promise to see at least three indie theater productions before the elections, including, but not limited to, my production of Martin Denton Martin Denton <laughs> happening right here, July 6th through the 23rd. I've got two, three, four, okay. Right. Sorry, I, I get paid in shameless promotion. So, might as well use it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, how am I doing there? Is that, is that a small one? Okay, good. Great, thanks. I, I need that. I need that. Um, oh, my mic. My mic is okay. Okay, great. So, question number two. Here we go. Bohemia is dead. There is a Whole Foods four blocks from here. The Starbucks at 47th and 9th was priced out of Hell's Kitchen. There will not be a New York International Fringe Festival for the first time in two decades. On Monday, the Greenwich Village Society for Historical Preservation and The Villager reported Mayor de Blasio's plan to create a giant tech hub on 14th Street where the PC Richards and Sons currently sits as an anchor for the proposed Silicon Alley between Astor Place and Union Square. This tech hub would be down the block from where the Palladium, which once was a 3,000-seat concert venue, 
is now an NYU dorm. It is also around the corner from where the Union Square Theater uh, is being demolished to create office and retail space. While the city must do things to progress, create good jobs, and look out for the indigent and at-risk populations, how do you candidates make the case to your colleagues and constituents that the underfunded and mostly not famous indie theater artists need to have living and working conditions that make it only moderately impossible <laughs> and not completely impossible to live and create art here. You have two minutes to respond. <laughs> Thank you very much for that important question. And I think the first thing we need to do is look at the root cause uh, and not just treat the symptom. And it does get down, I think, to the decline of middle class jobs in New York City and also the crazy government policies of subsidizing luxury condo development, which prices out real New Yorkers and the culture of New York City. I'm running to represent Lower Manhattan, and that's the area that the Dutch originally settled in 1624. So history and culture in New York City is very important to me. And I do have a background in the arts. I am a trained percussionist, I am a trained singer, and I am a trained actor. And my crowning moment was in a big theatrical production, was serving as the Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz. And I was told by all the cast members that I looked fantastic in silver makeup. Not only did Dorothy say that, but also the Wicked Witch of the West. So I have both sides covered. Um, so it is important to be an advocate for the arts, I do believe in the arts, and I do believe that we have to look at the root cause of the problem, not just treat the symptoms. Thank you. I agree with Aaron, but it's also, especially when we first start talking about affordable housing, and I think we first have to think of the affordable housing that artists have in Soho and preserving that. If you go to community board meetings month after month, you know real estate developers, real estate brokers are always trying to proclaim that there's no more artists living in Tribeca and Soho, and that's a lie. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at my financial disclosure statement, which is coming out today, 25% of my donors are artists from Soho and Tribeca, so they're still living there and they're still thriving. Maybe, you know, you you can't say you're not an artist because you're not on stage. You're always an artist. No, no matter if you're young, um, you know, middle age, or, or senior, as an artist is an artist from the beginning to the end. And I think that's how you have to see it from a city council position. Looking at artists from you, when I was a kid, I did my first street performance at the age of nine on Staten Street. And, and then all throughout high school, I even hosted the talent show. And in college, I was actually Toto in the Wizard of Oz. Um, <laughs> So me and Aaron do have something in common. Um, but it's understanding this, that an artist doesn't stop. You know, you don't stop creating art or thinking about art. And so you, it's all about thinking about legislation that you could pass to increase affordable housing and true affordable housing. I feel like when we look at the affordable housing that's being developed in our district, whether it's in the two bridges or exit street crossing, I can't afford to live that. The people that live two blocks down can't afford to live that. A lot of them being artists. A lot of artists came and moved down to the Lower East Side, so in Tribeca, because no one wanted to live here. And so we had the, not only the home, but we had the space to express ourselves. And I think we should try to preserve the people and the culture that is there for a reason. People move here for that. People move here for everyone in this room. People want to see our works, and that's why they want to live there. So I, it's not only preserving the affordable housing that's there, creating new, true affordable housing, but... Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Well, I guess the Wizard of Oz was something that was popular back then, because I played Dorothy at many improv <laughs> center and Grand Street Settlement. Um, I think I did pretty well. But I, I do agree with both of them, um, and I do think that uh, preserving the living um, and working conditions of performing artists is really, really important. I remember growing up, um, a lot of programs in the public school system allowed us to see 
caps and to see all of these Broadway shows and to receive scholarships from these community-based organizations with the hope that we will enjoy the arts. Somewhere along the line, that must have faded out, maybe at middle school, high school, where everything was so academic and we've lost the, the beauty of what art can really be. And I think that that comes with the fact that it's really hard to gain a job once you graduate, and I, I know that you know firsthand. Um, but what I would do is ensure that the performing artists actually can survive, um, can receive jobs, and in doing so, I will be speaking to organizations such as the Department of Youth and Community Development, which offers a substantial amount of money to after school programming, beacon programming, NYCHA programming, and ensure that in their proposals, anyone that's applying for these RFPs, they include uh, vendors, subcontractors that are all from performing arts organizations. And that would entail having jobs, having uh, having jobs and making sure that your your talents are given to everyone as well. Um, and I guess that's it. Thank you. Uh, so I was never in the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> but if I were, I would have been Toto. <laughs> so um, I, I, I want to really congratulate all of you for this coalition and this political activism because that is how things get done. And frankly, I want to encourage you to work with your community boards. I sit on my community board uh, for housing, homelessness, and human rights, as well as health and education. And it doesn't take much to motivate your community board to be responsive, quite frankly. So maybe this group here shows up for your community board and all of a sudden you're on the radar. And you're starting to make them aware that artists are looking for space. They're looking for affordability. Uh, we have that for our veterans. Uh, when, when we talk about mandatory inclusionary housing, we allocate space for our veterans. Um, I would like to get to the point where your community boards have that in their heads that you're looking for that space, you need that affordable space, and that they should be making those same allocations for our artists. Uh, artists transform neighborhoods. I lived on Bleecker Street for many years uh, and watched Greenwich Village be the hottest place in town, and then artists couldn't afford to live there anymore. And they kept getting pushed out and pushed out uh, and continuing to transform neighborhoods and real estate uh, developers following them and prices increasing as a consequence. So I think it's your turn. I think it's your turn to ask for affordability and for participation in your community boards and their decision making when it comes to, to space that you're entitled to. So I want to underscore political activism. That's how you're going to get stuff done. Thank you. So as your councilwoman, uh, one of the first things that I would like to do, of course, is to make sure that I am in touch with the groups that are doing the work. I think that one of our responsibility, hopefully as, as your representatives, is to make sure that we are funding the groups that are on the ground, that are there every day. And I know that performing artists, it's a very, very diverse category. Just the people in this room, the, the kind of the clapping in the beginning and all of you that fill these special roles to create this amazing community. And I think that arts is really important to our holistic health. It is really, really important that it's just present every single day. It's not just something that should be after school. It's not just something that should be in elementary school. It should be throughout our lives. And it's really about creating an accessible environment. And I think that what you're doing here at, at LIT is really using organizing and using political engagement in the right way. So, um, you know, we have a very, very diverse district. And we mentioned, you mentioned a lot, you mentioned uh, small businesses, you mentioned the tech hub. And I think that what we fear is that we're gonna be become a very sterile uh, city of neighborhoods. And we're gonna lose that authenticity and that grit that makes some of them so special and so unique. And I think what we have to do is realize that there are still some really amazing pockets where there are artists that need to be tapped into. It doesn't seem like it, but this block right here is very, very far 
from the almost 10,000 units of public housing that are on the waterfront. So I wanna be able to build partnerships, really build bridges, and make sure that we're nourishing our artists. There are people who have been here a long time. I'm only still here because I still live in the building where I grew up my entire life. And I wanna make sure that the young people that come in, whether they're able to live here or not, have the space to work and really have the space to create partnerships so we could create and maintain a very, very culturally diverse and beautiful district. Okay, so Wizard of Oz. Uh, never performed in it, but I do feel like I am living in it. Uh, Wizard of Oz, out of touch leader hiding behind a curtain only interested in maintaining his own power. Uh, lots of small districts being affected by the fear and the feeling that they can't control their lives anymore. Um, I live on 10th Street. I live four blocks away from where the Palladium which I loved, and I think I had my first underage drink there. Uh, it was a wonderful space, it was a community space, it was also a performance space and a concert space, and now it's a dormitory. Um, I'm also, there's three or four other buildings that um, Andrew Berman mentioned in that same email that are all within three or four blocks of me. Um, so, what can we do? There are a couple things we can do about affordable housing. The number one thing that we can do is we need to take a comprehensive look at our land use laws. Our land use laws have not been comprehensively reviewed since 1966, and they don't work for the city anymore. They work for some people in the city, they work for developers. They don't work so well for the community. Yeah. Yeah. We, we need to have, the communities need to have a seat at the table, a serious seat at the table with teeth when these huge changes are being proposed to our neighborhoods. When you are ripping down uh, beautiful historic tenements that have affordable housing, truly affordable housing, and you're replacing them with a hotel or a gigantic re residential building, and you're putting 100 affordable units in, but they're priced so that within two years they're not going to be affordable anymore. Those are affordable units that are leaking out of the system. The second thing we can do is, I love your idea of creating more West Best. You know, if we can have a tech hub, we can have an artist hub. Why not have an artist hub? I mean, there's, there's definitely vacant buildings around that the city could acquire and the city could, or ha I mean, heck, build them. I mean, you know, if you build them, they will come. But, you know, we, we have to figure out, you know, where our value is. Tech hub might be nice, but I would rather have an artist hub three blocks from where I'm trying to raise my family. And starting again back on the end with Aaron, we're going to have one minute to give us a wrap up. As an artist myself, arts education is very important to me. And we haven't talked much about arts education today. But let me tell you about Lower Manhattan, the district that I seek to represent. There is a shortage of auditorium space in public schools in Lower Manhattan. How do you have a band class? How do you have a band program? How do you have a holiday pageant or a high school theatrical play if you don't have an auditorium to hold uh, those programs? So we need to invest more in arts education and we need to have the facilities in which we can have these very important arts programs. Thank you very much for listening to all of us today. Again, my name is Aaron Foldenauer, seeking to represent District 1, New York City Council. I look forward to speaking with you all later. Hi, everyone. Um, I think today we really, each of us, talked about what we could do as a city council person to help promote arts, and not through only through legislation, but through the land use and through just being vocal about it. However, I, think, I feel like we could get one thing that a city council can do, and that connect communities. I want to represent one of the most diverse communities in, in the world, where we have Chinatown, we have Tribeca, we have Fida, we have Lower East Side, we have Greenwich Village. And I feel like understanding each and every aspect of the district is what I can do. I could be that point person that could say, oh, this Chinese organization needs a theater? Well, we have space in Henry Street Settlement. Uh, families in the Lower East Side want to know how to connect technology and theater? We could go to 3PL. That family in Fidei wants to, you know, 
hang out in Washington Square Park and see a show nearby, I could take them to another theater. We need someone that could be that connector, not only in City Hall, but in my office and in the streets, and I would be that person fighting for affordable housing, fighting affordable space, and fighting to have your voice proclaimed not only in the city, but nationwide. Thank you. Well, I want to thank Liz for uh, putting this together um, and giving us the opportunity to speak about how we would enhance the platform that everyone here supports. Um, and I definitely want to thank all of you because by you being here, it shows that you're holding elected officials as well as candidates accountable for incorporating your platform in their vision if they're elected. And I think that's really, really important, and especially during uh, this election year. Um, what I do want to say is that a lot of folks um, can say one thing prior to being elected, but I want you to hold me accountable for the things that I have said, and I challenge you to get my literature, which is back there with my phone number and my website, and see how I can best serve you now. Not in September, not in January, but now, because I'm here to sell myself to you. And I want you guys to be able to utilize the resources that I have so that we can make our community and our district beautiful. Um, I grew up here on Delancey and Columbia Street in public housing, and I still reside there. And I know that the entire community, the, the city, can benefit from having artist participation and in the political process. Thank you. I want to thank all of you for being here today. And I want to tell a little bit more about my background. I really got my political education in the schoolyard. And when we were experiencing $200,000 in budget cuts uh, every year, it was clear to me that I had to reach out to elected officials and I had to reach out to community organizations. And I want to emphasize that again. Uh, as a consequence, we brought the New York Theater Ballet into uh, local schools, uh, as well as uh, the Turtle Bay Music School. All around you are opportunities for partnerships. So I want to make clear that um, we can accomplish what we need by looking around us. Sometimes we just miss out on the obvious in terms of how we can work together as a community and bring resources to a school or a senior center or provide uh, uh, performing space for you as a consequence of those partnerships. I also want to say I'm uh, a supporter and uh, a participant in the Triangle uh, Fire. It is uh, a new one act opera that just uh, premiered in New York City on Sunday. You're all invited, March 25th. Uh, 1911 was the Triangle Turquoise Factory fire, and I want to tell you to go to Waverly Place uh, at NYU, at University Place, and it's a wonderful event. So be there, please. Well, everyone, I, I want to thank you, of course. I see people here in this room that I have worked with in the past. And so my career has been spent coalition building and building these partnerships. I will never say I, I've done anything alone. It has always, always been with groups and with the pioneers of this community. This district has a pioneering spirit and we know how to do a lot with a very little. So when we talk about the cultural institutions group and how much money and power there is there and how we want to expand that list, we have to be ready for a fight. And I'm a fighter. I've always been a fighter. I was raised by strong, strong women. And that's who's always at the forefront of the movement. And that's what this is. This campaign is an opportunity for us to be inclusive, for it to be pushed by people power. I know so many artists in, in here and who have been displaced. And what I want to do, I know it's going to be an uphill battle, and it's going to be challenging. Being a city council person is probably one of the most challenging positions in the city. But I will be here to fight for the funding that we need and to make sure we have arts in our classrooms and everywhere. It is so important to our health, and I hope to have your support. OK, thank you very much uh, for, for having us here. Um, I ask three things. 
One is that you vote. Vote on September 12th. Election day in New York City is September 12th, not November. It's the primary. Yes. Vote on September 12th. Please vote for me. <laughs> vote for me, or if you're not in my district. I feel bad if you're not in my district. Vote for somebody. Go and vote. Grab someone and vote. Go for coffee, go, go and vote. Everyone needs to vote on September 12th. Second thing I would ask is, if you don't know who your state senator in Al is in Albany, find out, and find out if that person is a member of the IDC. These are the people that are making New York State a red state. And if you do live in, a, in an area where your state senator is a member of the IDC, please make sure that you vote in the primary in September 2018. New York State's a blue state. It should be a blue state, and we all have to band together. This is a New York City problem because it's our state senators that are the primary constituents of the IDC. Yep. The third thing I would ask is keep making art, please. Please keep making art. It's the only thing that is keeping me going. And <laughs> <laughs> since November, early November, um, we rely on it. We rely on it to make us feel happy when we're sad. And, and I just, God bless all of you for participating in that process. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're about to take a five minute break to switch everybody out. Before we do, well, let me say two, three things. One, if you like any of these folks, if your heart goes pitter pat for any of these folks, volunteer for them tonight. Walk over to them and introduce yourselves. Two, get some beer. Three, bathrooms upstairs. Five minutes, thank you. 